3. Germany retaliates. The British blockade trapped most German ships in port. The Germans had some successes against British commerce using surface ships that were already at sea when the war began. At this stage of the war, most of the damage to British commerce was done by German merchant cruisers such as SMS Prinz Eitel Friedrich. In the Pacific and South Atlantic, she sank 11 ships, a total of 33,000 tons. The Germans also used converted merchant ships as mine layers. On the 5th of August 1914, the British destroyer HMS Lance fired the first shot of the naval war at the German passenger steamer turned mine layer Königin Louise. Both mines and submarines quickly proved they were deadly. On August 6, 1914, the cruiser HMS Ampion was sunk by mines laid by the Königin Louise. On the 5th of September 1914, another cruiser, HMS Pathfinder, was sunk by a torpedo from a German submarine in the Firth of Forth. Three obsolete cruisers, Abakir, Hogue and Cressy, on patrol off the Dutch coast, were sunk by U-9 on the 22nd of September. Even before this, the British had been aware of the threat of torpedo attacks, first from torpedo boats and then from destroyers. They began to take submarines seriously, so much so that in October 1914, the Grand Fleet was ordered to leave its main anchorage in Scarpa Flow while its anti-submarine defences were improved. On 27th of October, the Dreadnought-class battleship HMS Audacious sank after hitting a mine off the northern Irish coast. The mine which struck HMS Audacious had been laid by another converted merchant ship, SMS Berlin. These successes barely reduced the Royal Navy's command of the sea, but they showed that the new underwater weapons were a threat. Submarine Warfare First Phase 1914 the first phase of submarine warfare was conducted under the terms of an international agreement known as Prize Rules or Cruiser Rules. Despite the war, the vast majority of merchant ships were sailing by themselves without any escort or even any defensive armament. At the time, the expression used for these vulnerable ships was that they were sailing independently. Any warship intercepting a neutral or a merchant ship had to compel it to stop and be searched before attacking it. This meant that a submarine had to surface, which made it vulnerable. Although merchant ships were sailing unescorted, many were equipped with wireless sets and could call for help from patrolling warships or just make a run for it if they were fast enough. A U-boat could only do 14 to 15 knots on the surface or 4 to 7 knots submerged. Passenger liners were much faster. The RMS Mauritania had a top speed of 25 knots. The British also began to equip their merchant ships with deck guns so that they could fire back at surface U-boats. Under these restrictions, most U-boats were ineffective commerce raiders.